Welcome to the Keringai Georegion. A georegion is a coherent landscape where numerous sites of geological significance are managed for conservation, education and sustainable development. Recognition may be a first step to nomination of an aspiring UNESCO Global Geopark, of which there are now more than 169 around the globe, with that number increasing by about 10 every year. This georegion proposal has been developed by the Friends of Karingai Environment. It is centred on Karingai Chase National Park and includes adjacent conservation parks in the coastline. The proposal is supported by the Australian Geoscience Council under their National Geotourism Strategy and by New South Wales agencies and local government. Georegions are not just about geology, but that is the place to start. The Karingai Georegion has the best exposure of an early to middle Triassic rock sequence within the Sydney Basin. It extends from the top of the Bulgo Sandstone to the base of the Ashfield Shale. The sediments were deposited in varied environments on coastal Gondwana at high latitude under subpolar conditions. They were later intruded by volcanic diatremes and a number of dikes. At the base, the Bald Hills Claystone forms wide shore platforms, supporting a wealth of intertidal fauna from Long Reef to Newport. It is a sequence of volcanic sediments derived from a vanished range to the east and deposited on a floodplain or in shallow lakes or an estuary. Now this is a very, very good example of what we call a true nudibranch. Nudibranch meaning naked gilled animal. The front of the, mouth, the animal is here, the two what we call rhinophores, they're sensory organs at this end, and then go along right at the other end, you've got the plumas feathery gills, and that's where the word naked gill comes from. The next rocks belong to the Newport Formation, a rich source of plant fossils, trace fossils and sedimentary structures. Footprints of large amphibians have been found. Several rock layers have been interpreted as Triassic Age soils, but these are quite unlike soils in the modern sense and need more research. The Hawkesbury sandstone occurs at the top of the sequence, deposited on a braid plain of a continental scale river, which had sources as far away as Antarctic Gondwana. It is mainly a quartz sandstone, but includes conglomerates and shale. Shale at Brookvale produced a rich fossil, insect and fish fauna. Igneous rocks have a limited distribution as dikes and Jurassic Age volcanic necks or diatremes. A superb diatreme exposure is retained on old quarry faces at Hornsby, which is to become a public park, and the crater-like form of another can be seen in Mugamara Nature Reserve. The shape of the Georegion's coast, with its pocket beaches alternating with prominent headlands and cliffs, and a number of intermittently open lagoons is a consequence of the recent drowning of the coast by 120 metres of sea level rise since the peak of the last ice age just 20,000 years ago. The apparent simplicity of the geology aided understanding of the soils. With slightly richer and deeper soils, the diatremes and the valley floors carried tall eucalypt forests and elements of temperate rainforest. Valley sides are stepped with low sandstone cliffs alternating with soil covered benches, islands of vegetation on rock outcrops and hanging swamps. The deepest valleys are shaded and accumulate sediment and nutrient washed down slope. This distribution of deep and shallow soil with low nutrient levels combined with a complex fire regime to affect the distribution of more than 24 plant communities and more than 1000 plant species. At least 14 species are listed as vulnerable and some 236 exotics have colonised the landscape where drainage has been altered, soils disturbed or additional nutrient introduced. As with the plants, the fauna of the georegion is diverse. No trace of the Pleistocene megafauna has been found locally, although it must have been present. Today the area retains 28 mammals and 160 bird species but also supports a number of ferals. Recent local extinctions include the dingo in the 1920s and the koala in the Avalon area at the end of the 20th century. 
There are hundreds of Aboriginal sites in the Gia region, but only a small number have been dated. Elsewhere in Sydney, human occupation has been shown to be at least 30,000 years old. In 1788, the Gia region was occupied by coastal clans of the Darug, and it was estimated that the local population exceeded 1,000 people. Their rock engraving sites are often located on prominent ridges, within view of one another, and on or near tessellated pavements. We have no knowledge of the nature of the ceremonies conducted in these places, but they are valued heritage sites that presumably told stories of spiritual ancestors and events. One of the most interesting recent archaeological finds was discovery of the earliest evidence of ritual spearing anywhere in the world. Narrabeen man was killed by a stone-barbed death spear 3,700 years ago and left to lie in the sand until his chance discovery in a cable trench. Because of the rugged landscape, poor soils and lack of resources, most of the land in the Gia region was bypassed for development until the 1950s. By then, much of it was in conservation reserves, although West Head had a narrow escape. In 1894, Karingai Chase was established as Australia's second national park through the efforts of Eccleston de Foray, who lobbied government and spent his own money to prevent the reckless destruction of native wildflowers. Others followed, especially John Duncan Tipper, and in hindsight, their management was limited, but they did create today's asset. Recreational demands in the Gia region are ever-changing, from late 19th century camping in rock shelters, German sailors folk dancing in Deep Creek before World War II, to 1950s camping at Palm Beach. New demands present new challenges. By linking all conservation areas in a Gia region with information provided about geosites and geo trails, Management can work more effectively to provide new learning experiences in an enjoyable and sustainable way. If you are interested in the bigger picture of the natural environment, come and take a look. This is the sort of spot where you've got a bit of an overhang and a bit of protection, although it's a cold side of the valley, uh, which is very likely to have Aboriginal occupation.